welcome him today amen into the house of the Lord and amen the prophet said no matter where you are he said if you make him welcome he would come amen he would come to receive his amen his worship and it's certainly good to be with you tonight and we want to if we can maybe just to bow our hearts in a word of prayer gracious Lord we certainly thank you tonight for the grace to be here Lord truly unworthy as we are Lord we are we're certainly Lord willing to serve you in whatever capacity you could use us Lord that we could say something that would help your children or something that would further the kingdom of God and Lord we're asking you tonight that you would be present here on the platform and Lord for our inabilities Lord for those places that we can't Lord, make up for, I, I just pray that you would come by, Lord, tonight. And may you put it together, Lord. May you speak something that would encourage your congregation here that has gathered out to believe you, Lord. Now, we invite you tonight, Lord, in a, in a way, Lord, that you would be more than just, a, just a, a standby or just someone here in the crowd. But, Lord, you'd be a worshipped. You'd be worshipped from our heart tonight. And we ask you, Lord. May you come make yourself known among us. May you heal them that are sick among us tonight, Lord. And Lord, the sick, the needy, Lord, those that are home tonight, the, the ones that have need, Lord, that's bedridden and they can't get, Lord, they can't get a, a, a complete healing in their body. We just pray tonight that, Lord, something be spoken to settle that, Father. Now, Lord, we're asking you tonight because we believe that you are God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And God bless you tonight. We want to, if we can, go to the book of Daniel. Um, we have just a little bit here for the book of Daniel, the second chapter. Um, I've, uh, I think that I, I, I've done, I, I've tried to pull out mainly what I was looking at in Daniel chapter one. I just have a little bit tonight in Daniel chapter two. Uh, I won't be able to get through this whole chapter, of course, but. It's just something the Lord's kind of just been nudging me this way. So I, I just want to share some things that I'm, that I'm seeing in here. In Daniel, the second chapter, let's start in the first verse. And if you could bring it up. Um, Brother Nathan, could I get you to do some reading? Um, you might want to bring your Bible if you want, or you can read mine either. Uh, Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to read here from Daniel chapter 2 to verse 30. Is it? Is it? Verse 2, 1 to 30. Is that okay with y'all if we read the Bible a little bit? Okay. <clears throat> and in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans, 
for to show the king his dreams, so they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king, and Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. But the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we, we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known to me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man on the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things that any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? And then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time, and that he would show the king the interpretation. And then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee. And praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets. And maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. God bless his word as you could be seated tonight. Amen. I know that was a little bit of a lengthy reading, and, and, and that's the reason we got Brother Nathan to do it. He does such a, a good job. Amen. And, uh, but, but, you, uh, but it's hard to break that up without you hearing the story. It's kind of a, it's a little bit hard to break it up, and I just thought it was such good reading today. I thought, my, it'd be good for everybody to be able to just... Just hear that kind of that in the story. Of course, if you're, 
if you continue reading later, you'll find that it goes into the actual dream. But we wanted to stop with just this portion of this. And I want to talk to you a little bit tonight from Daniel chapter 2. I want to talk to you about the dream uh, and, and God's answer to these dreams. And uh, if you, if you uh, go back and read some things Brother Branham had to say is in principles of divine healing. Brother Branham said, how many ever dreamed a dream? He said, let's see your hand. He said, now most normal people is going to because that's your subconscious, we'll call it. And listen, your subconscious, he says, now nor your conscience and here's your subconscious. People didn't dream a dream at all. There's this way back. Now, I believe God deals in dreams. That's right. King Nebuchadnezzar and Joseph and many of them and so forth. He dealt with dreams, but a seer isn't that way. Uh, in Jesus Christ, the same. He said, if you tell me what a dream was, and then you can't tell me, if you can't tell me what a dream was, then you can't tell me what the interpretation is. But if you'll tell me what I dream, the thing's gone from me, reveal it back to me, then I know your interpretation is right. Now, Brother Bram talks a little bit about dreams and shows that dreams is actually, and I'll, I'll paraphrase many of the things, but he'll talk about dreams being a secondary way uh, for God to reveal things. He actually compares it to the interpretation of tongues. Like if you, someone would speak in tongues, he said, now, you, you know, speaking in tongues, he said, but there, there needs to be an interpretation of the tongue before it can become prophecy. Now, uh, you, you, you can all know this, and you, you've been in meetings or in the services, and you've heard somebody speak in tongues with no interpretations or something, but, but, but you must realize that there are diverse kinds of tongues. And some tongues are worship and praise, and, and even sometimes they're tongues of prayer. And uh, you've even heard in a prayer line once in a while, you've heard prayer uh, when tongues break in there. And what it is, it's a channel of prayer uh, that sometimes is reached to break a spirit that's upon a person or something of that nature. But it in no wise is meant to be a message to the church. But when there is supposed to be brought a message to the church, there should be an interpretation of the tongues that would be a, a message. Otherwise, it's an unclear thing. So Brother Ram compares this exactly with uh, tongues and interpretation with dreams and interpretations. In other words, you, you, don't, you don't want to tell a dream to a church as just a symbol because without an interpretation, it actually causes more confusion than it does giving clarity to something so if God's going to send something there's one huge thing that we know about the Lord is he is not the author of confusion God does not author confusion so sometimes we're all dreamers and sometimes you can get too much to eat or you can you can you can have a rough night you can dream things and sometimes dreams can be symbolic and and they can uh, they can have things you know Christians can dream certain things are going to fall or something's going to happen so, and it's symbolic and it tears their minds all up and they'll start making things out of it and and the devil will get into the thing y'all remember a woman come to brother Bram one time it was standing on white sands and her whole family was having trouble and when brother Bram began to discern her he said well see he said, you see all this trouble and this darkness? He said, but, but, but in the dream, you're standing on white sands. He said, which means that everything is okay, but because you don't know it's okay, you're nervous and you're causing your whole family to be nervous. So you're, see, so all that was coming and in the dream, it just had got worse, but because she couldn't interpret it, she thought it was something bad. But when a prophet got a hold of it, he said, really, there's nothing wrong. You're standing in a good place, but all these things is coming out. So, so dreams can be both good and bad. And so when we when we start looking at dreams, of course, there's ways to handle dreams. And I, I can say this to you in, in, in looking here at dreams is, is that we, we have gifted dreamers here in the church. I know personally I dream once in a while and see it. But if, if there's not a prophet in the land to interpret dreams, then, then you, you see if God gives you a dream, that dream will be without symbol. You, you'll dream a dream and read. In other words, you won't have to a question because the dream you have will be actually without a symbol. In other words, if you come up and you have all these symbols and you tell me the dream, say, can you tell me what it means? Brother Bram said, unless I can tell you the dream, I can't tell you what it means. So if you give someone a dream, and I'll, I'll tell you this for your, for your benefit, amen, that the spirit of Nicolaitism has long abused dreams itself. I, I know people, when you got ready to, uh, maybe the Lord was leading you to do something else or go to a different church, amen, there's always that dreamer in the church that comes and says, I dreamed your children's going to be struck by this, and you're going to lose your ministry, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. It's, amen, because dreams are so easily used for control, and that's why demonic spirits can move through gifts unless they're operated according to the scripture. Amen. Now, what we're looking here at is we're looking at something scripturally that Brother Branham uses uh, Nebuchadnezzar to establish something that if God
God's going to deal with you, he deals with you in reality. In other words, if, you're, if he's going to show you something in a dream, it'll be right out. If it's not right out, then just lay it on the shelf and don't worry about it because there's not a prophet in the land to tell you what it means and it will become confusion and a place to lose faith or a place for someone to control you. I, I can say that with, with, by personal experience. I can promise you that, that dreams become a place of control because if you tell somebody what you dreamed, they can take every little symbol in that dream and make it mean something, whether it means that or not, but they use it for their own good. Now, I know none of you has ever had any kind of experiences to make you go through things like that, but, but I, Brother David, I have had a couple like that in my lifetime. Amen. But, but I'll say this to you. Amen. But God uses dreams. And when God uses a dream, amen, those dreams are precise and perfect. Perfect. You know, it don't even have to be someone, amen, who is exactly right to have a, a right dream nor does it have to be somebody exactly right to have a right prophecy now here in the Bible King Nebuchadnezzar is having a dream and he is a Babylonian king but God is dealing with him in a dream and he's going to be telling the future not just the future of his kingdom but this man is going to tell the entire events throughout history from his day until the setting up of the millennium of Jesus Christ can you imagine God would reveal that in a dream. Amen. But when, when Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, amen, it is, a, it is a very important dream. It's a very powerful dream. But there is a vindicated prophet on the scene to interpret that dream and give direction to the church. Now, some people actually call us Pentecostal because we worship and because we have a good time and shout and praise God and glory. Well, I, 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 I found some of the same people that call us Pentecostals. They have dreams and symbols and then they interpret those symbols and, and try to bring direction to the church when really that's what Pentecostalism is is when amen when, when you go into one another looking for an answer to spiritual matters amen knowing that, that, that unless it is a vindicated prophet every situation must be judged with two witnesses now, now I'm talking about some real things here amen I'm talking about direction amen because every kind of spirit in the world wants to set the direction of a church or the direction of a family or direction of the life. Amen. But there is going to be a bride in the last day that will have a perfect faith by a perfect interpretation of the word of God. Amen. In other words, there is coming in the last day a bride that will have a rapturing faith. Rapturing faith will be a perfect faith. And perfection of faith can only be established by a vindicated word of Almighty God. Anything else outside of a vindicated prophet there is a measure of error in their thinking or in their dreams or in their ideas so it's not a place that we can build our lives but where we can build amen now I, I, I'm bringing this to you for a reason because brother Branham said when a man comes into contact with God by the answer of the word he said you can't twist it out of that man you can't twist it away from that man because he's received an answer that is greater than he is now I mean, maybe you maybe you could come and you could have a dream. You come to me and you say, well, Brother Wayne, I dreamed this and this and this. Amen. And you could tell me the symbols and all that. And I could say, well, now that sounds pretty good. And I could say, well, maybe it's like this and maybe it's like that. And, and, and you could put a little faith in it and that'll last a little while, but let it get really hard. Let, let the trial get really hard. And when, when the trial gets really hard, amen, you'll find out whether you're in contact with God or the intellect of a man. And if it's just intellectual, it'll break down when the trial starts coming. But if you ever get in contact with God, it don't matter what happens. It don't matter what takes place. You have an answer from God and you'll hold on to that answer no matter what it is. And that answer will rule over your life because you know that that answer has come from God. Now, now when, when I say this, I find that in the scripture here, of course, these, these dreams, uh, this dream that has come to Nebuchadnezzar, of course, it's about world events. It's a, it's a, great, big, uh, it's a great big dream. Amen. And, and of course, he has Daniel and these three Hebrew children in his, in, his, uh, in his kingdom. And you get all these Chaldeans and you get all these wise men. You get all these people here. Now, think of this because when this man has a dream, what has happened now is the mystery has become a challenge upon who is just psychologically and intellectually wise or who is spiritually wisdom. Now spiritual wisdom and intellectual wisdom is a huge difference because 
because you can school intellectualism. You can school a, a way to speak. You can school a way to understand. But you cannot, you cannot school the interpretation of something you don't know about from man. You just can't school that. Amen. Because it takes a spiritual inspiration to bring that in. You see, what's beautiful is they had all these preachers. They had all these denominations. They had all these teachers. And whenever Nebuchadnezzar has the dream, he said, come and give me the interpretation and they all show up with joy. Amen. We're going to get to interpret another scripture. We're going to get to break it down and tell the king what it means. And, and, and they get in there and the king says, well, I tell you what you do. You tell me the dream and then I'll know you're telling me the interpretation. And they said, wait a minute, ain't nobody can do that. And he said, that's right. <laughs> if I tell you the dream and I tell you, he said, you've got lying words and corrupt things to tell me. In other words, he knew that false interpretation come by them having wisdom of his dream. But if they had no wisdom of the dream and they told the dream, they surely would know the answer to the dream because the same wisdom that could tell it is the same wisdom that could interpret it. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? That all the way back in the book of Daniel, God was already showing that he would put a mystery in the last day that would separate a prophet from, from the schools and the soothsayers and the psychologists and all of the wise. Who would have ever known that God would put a mystery in the Bible or he would put a mystery in the kingdom of Babylon, amen, to show who really was the prophet prophet in that generation. God was not only telling, amen, the world what was about to come. He was telling them that you've got a prophet among you that's different than ever soothsayer. He's different than ever Chaldean. He's different than ever wise men. This man is a different kind of preacher than any preacher that you've ever come in contact with. Oh, and I tell you tonight, amen, you, you hear my suggestions and that's what exactly I mean. That God would put a mystery in the last day I bet of the scripture, of the the Bible, but he put the mystery in their own purpose that he might deviate the difference between all of the schools and Elijah the prophet of God whom God would spiritually discern truth to in the last days. Can you imagine, go back there, amen, and look at the scripture. I, I think it's an amazing parallel. Pull up Malachi chapter 4, verses, uh, uh, verses 4, 5, and 6, I believe it is. Amen, Malachi chapter 4, pull it up. Now watch the, watch the parallel in the scripture in Daniel chapter 2. When they couldn't tell the dream, what did he do? He told them that he was going to destroy them. Is that right? Amen. Now, remember you the law of Moses, my servant, I commanded Horam with the statutes and judgments, the fifth verse. Behold, I send unto you Elijah before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What's the next verse? And he should turn the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Unless there is a spiritual ministry of a prophetic anointing in the last day, the whole world is going to be destroyed. In the book of Daniel, the second chapter, the same challenge was being placed upon the church to come up with an interpretation which was completely impossible by their own, by their own, by their own admittance. They said nobody's ever asked anybody to do this because nobody can do this. Who is it that can do this? Who can tell a man the dream and then tell him it? And finally, the wise men even go as much as to say, he said, even nobody ever asked it because nobody can do it. And the only person that could do it is God and he don't dwell in the flesh. Now, isn't it amazing that the Babylonians had separated God from humanity? They put God somewhere way out there on a, up, uh, somewhere's way out on the line. They put him way out somewhere. Amen. And, and, and in no way could God be in the flesh of man. No, there was no, there was no connection with humanity in the God that they served. Amen. But let me tell you this. All the while they were talking, God had a man right there in their kingdom that was able to discern and able to tell what the secret of that great king was. Now, it's a beautiful thing because of course they were facing a curse they were facing destruction and so is it in Malachi 4 that the earth was going to come into a curse unless that God would send a prophet unless somebody could spiritually discern you see what we didn't need we didn't need another school 
We didn't need another person to draw a chart on the map and tell us the timeline of the Old Testament and how it fit with the New Testament and how the Gospels come together and how the books was arranged. And, amen. The schools has been doing that for 2,000 years. But with every bit of that, think of this, with every bit of that, the Bible said unless Elijah would come, it'll be cursed. It'll be destroyed. And God was saying unless there's a gift that can spiritually discern the need of that hour, amen, the curse will come and no flesh will be saved but if it would come that would be a rapture of a church that would be a restoration of faith if it would come that would be a group of people on the earth who would be an invincible army that would be a group of people with a perfect faith with a perfect understanding with a perfect vindicated word of God can you imagine if he would come? <laughs> amen. Think about this a minute. Brother Branham tells us this. Amen. He tells us of how that Nebuchadnezzar's dream was to be interpreted. Now, it's amazing that Brother Branham will say that this dream was the thing, amen, that brought us to that point, amen, of how that the dream would tell the time, a Gentile time. Now, isn't it amazing? Dreams and interpretations is now tied to Gentile kingdoms and the timing of the Gentiles. Now it's beautiful because Brother Branham will tell us this. In a message serves as this the end time. Amen. He actually, what serves, what time is it? He preaches it in 1962. I, I, would, I would say that you should listen to it. I, I, I compel you to go home and listen to this sermon. But serves as this the end time. Amen. In paragraph 48, Brother Branham begins with six different dreams that has been given in the, in the spring of 1961 throughout the fall of 1962. There's six different dreams, and the one you know most about, of course, is Junior Jackson's dream. How many remembers the dream? When Brother Bram goes high up on the knoll, remember? And he was preaching, and the water started coming, started washing back the, the grass, and he said while he was standing there, there was a rock began to be exposed. He said, and Brother Bram had all of them gathering up, and they were looking on that. He said because there was a, a place there that, that, that was unwritten, a word was being revealed on that rock, and had them all gathered up there. And Brother Bram said, he said to them, look on this. Remember? And then he stepped back and he said, mysteriously, there was a, a bar coming to his hand. Brother Bram said, a sharp tool. And he took that and knocked the top of that mountain off. And when he did, there was word in there that the light had never shone on before. Y'all remember that? Well, when Brother Bram tells that dream, he meant in Sirs this the time. He said, when he said, look on this, he said, that's being fulfilled tonight. Because Brother Branham was asking the church, what time is it? And he was telling the dream of Junior Jackson. And he said, now watch. He said, what was that first? The waters washed the dirt off and showed that white rock. He said, what was that? He said, that was the mysteries of baptism of the Holy Ghost and predestination. These things has been talked about down through the ages. He said, but when the top of that mountain was knocked off with that sharp tool, he said, in there were things that had never been revealed. He said, which was the opening of them seven seals because the whole Bible had been sealed up by seven seals and light had never shined upon that portion of the word before. How many knows that Brother Bram taught us that when Elijah comes in Revelation 10 that the mystery of the seven seals will have been a total secret up to that time. Nobody has ever knew what them seals were. They were completely shut up. Brother Bram said John wept about it because they had been shut up until the end time. But Jer Junior Jack Jackson was dreaming about it, but he didn't know what it was. He just knew Brother Bram was catching a, a tool in his hand. Now, y'all know that was in February of 1961. How many of you realize this? Amen, that in that same fall of 1962, amen, Brother Beeler has a dream, remember? Amen, Sister Steffi has a dream. That's a popular one. You all might remember it. Brother Bram was having a marriage going in the, in the tabernacle, and they brought food, remember? And she was a little troubled. They were eating in the sanctuary. And they realized that they were serving a food and it was a perfect food, but the bride wasn't perfect. Y'all remember that? And Brother Brown said, see, it was a perfect food. He said it was spiritual food. It was a spiritual marriage going on. There was a spiritual food being served. He said, now remember that spiritual food? Greatest battle ever fought. Instead of going overseas, we'll pack these barrels full of, of, of perfect word. Amen. Remember Christ, the mystery of God revealed. He starts it by saying, Lord, let there be a tape load or a barrel full this morning. What was it? A prophet was packing the word into storage containers for the church of the living God to live on down through this time of this, of this, of this problems that we're going to have down through the ages because God was restoring the church to an answer of a vindication 
authenticated word, but he was putting it on audio recording. Huh? Have y'all ever think about that, that God so loved you that your answers aren't just in books, but you heard the voice of a prophet of God give you the answer in a Kentucky English in a humble way? Amen. There's some things Brother Branham said. Had Brother Branham himself not said it, I wouldn't have believed it. But because he said it, he's a vindicated prophet, and I believed it every bit the way he said it. Hey man, I, I, I just want to share something with you. Have you ever thought about this? Hey man, you, you, the seven seal tape, the original one. Do you all know that they stopped that tape? Hey man, just about a half hour before the end. Hey man, and the next morning on Monday morning, Brother Bram re-records an end to the seven seal and puts it on. And when that tape goes out for years, people think that's the tape or the only, that was the original tape that was made. And on it, he said, tonight I'm omitting the revelation of the seven seal. So around the world, people were teaching the seven seal had been omitted he hadn't told it but brother Branham had pre-recorded that while he was in his own tabernacle and he took it with him to his grave come on church but after brother Branham died they released that portion of the seven seal and the portion you have now is a portion he recorded in his own voice of saying I have received the revelation of the third pool which is the seven seal which is the ministry of Christ which was the opening of the and do you see what it was it was the word of God coming to the church and God was recorded to the church now I don't have time to go through all these visions and dreams, but I'll tell you this. God gives six different dreams here in, the, here in these few chapters. Brother Billard, Sister Stephanie, and Brother Collins, and Junior Jackson, and all these dreams were leading up to the opening of the seven seals or Brother Branham going out to Sunset Mountain out in Tucson to receive the revelation. Now, Brother Branham says, watch here. There is six different dreams. And Brother Branham held the interpretation of every one of them dreams until he preaches the message serves as this end sign. Or is, what time is it serves? But in this book, he tells the dreams and then he tells the interpretations of those dreams. And, but he don't just do that, he also gives a vision. So there's six dreams and a vision leading up to Brother Branham going out there at Sunset Mountain. Now some people say, well, Brother Wayne, what's so important about that? Think about this a minute now. Right now we're reading a vision and a dream of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar which foretold the future. Amen. Now some of the things that is in Daniel chapter 2 has not been completely fulfilled yet. Amen. We're looking into the future. Some of the things that were said are not completely revealed. Amen. But 90% of it probably has already been fulfilled in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And because of the fulfillment of it, we have seen that 90% of it was been already accurate to the very date of the changing of kingdoms. Then why wouldn't we believe that the future events, amen, in the book of Daniel would also stand just as accurate as the past events because God was proving to the him. They wasn't just getting a dream. That was a prophet there to interpret and give them an answer. Are you hearing me tonight, church? You may dream the dream, but it don't mean it's the answer. But when you got a prophet's word concerning a situation, that is the answer to the devil's question. That is the answer to everything that's going on in a person's life. Amen. Now, by God's accuracy, he tells these different things. Brother Branham actually says it. He dreamed a dream and interpreted the Gentile kingdoms. In verse 121, in paragraph 121 of influence, he said everything the Bible has spoke of says here, history, it's happened. The Bible said here, history, it's happened. Now we're at the time of the rapture. It's going to happen. See, it's happened. It's happened. It's going to happen. Because you're watching perfect interpretation of the word. Have you ever wondered why when Brother Branham tells that the grizzly bear will be a certain height, he'll shoot it a certain way? Why did he tell 42 inches to the, to the caribou horns? Why did he say we'll cross three streams and then we'll hit a muddy one, then we'll hit a clear one, then we'll fish three days, you'll catch two fish, and won't catch another one? Why is he telling those things? He didn't have to do that. But God was using those things to prove to the people standing around him that he had an answer from God according to the traveling not just of the individuals that was walking with him are you hearing me
me it wasn't just for the men who was fishing with him. If he could tell them how many fish they were going to catch tomorrow, couldn't he tell the church what was coming down the road and what was going to be? We have had a prophet among us, church. We've had a perfect vindication of the word of God in our age, and there should not be one question left in the church of the living God. There has been a dissolver of doubt among us to dissolve every question of whether God is real, whether God keeps his word, what does God do in these certain situations? There should be an answer there in the heart of every believer. Amen. To declare six dreams and a vision. Amen. Watch God gave it to us. Now in the in the in, in the Sirzas, this is the time we're actually paralleling that with Daniel chapter 2 because it was a it wasn't actually Brother Branham having the dreams, it was Brother Branham doing the interpreting, which brought, which brought several people into connection to actually sanction, amen, what the prophet was saying at that time. How many realize when you're listening to a tape and you hear an amen, that that actually means something to you? Now, now you may not uh, realize this. I've actually got a quote here. I don't know if I, I can find it exactly right now. Amen. But Brother Branham will tell this. He'll actually say to the brethren while they're there, he said, now listen, you say amen. And he's taping this. And he said, now as you're saying amen, he said, this tape is going to go out into the world. And people are going to hear your voice saying amen on this. He said, which is sanctioning that I'm telling the truth. I thought, oh my. Amen. I, I, my voice ain't on that, on that tape, but let it be here now. Amen, that I'm sanctioning what he said is the truth. Because the secrets that had been hid, of course, was what was going to be preached in the seventh seal. The ministry of William Branham was going to be unfolded in three different phases of his ministry. There would be a first pull that would be a healing. There would be a second pull which would be a prophesying. But the third pool would be the opening of the word to bring an answer to the church for vindication that would bring a rapturing anointing into the church. See, the third pool would be the ministry of a prophet giving you the answer on the word. My, when you, when you get this, you've got an answer from God upon the word of God. Think about this a minute. Hey Amen. If, if someone comes stumbling in here tonight and you're praying about something and they say, well, I feel it could be this way or I feel it could be this way. But if God has used a prophet to tell you what it means. There should not be anything to shake you from what a prophet said according to the scripture. And you say, by the way, why are you driving this in so strong? Because I want you to realize something. If you're going to get rapturing faith, it's got to come from absolute faith. It has to be absolute vindication. It's got to be absolute truth. If there is one hole in what you believe, if there's one loose feather in where you are, the devil's going to find it, brother. He's going to try you and test you on every fiber of the faith that you are but listen I, I've got news for the devil tonight there is a bride on the earth today that is sold out to the word of God hey amen what is it it's a word it was a word coming through a prophet that's what it is do you see there will be a message in the last day the opening of this capstone with the voices of those seven seals that's not even written or wrote, wrote in the word of God brother man said now watch it took me into that pyramid Junior seen it take him into that pyramid. Isn't that beautiful? It took him into that pyramid. Hey man, now y'all know what I'm talking about. Out there on Sunset Mountain, there was a picture taken of a seven angels forming the face of Jesus. Hey man, Brother Bam wasn't just meeting some angels, something lifted him up. Something brought them into the pyramid of themselves. How many ever heard the vision of the third pool? He said, something lifted me up. And I heard him say, I'll meet you in there. Come on, church. This prophet was not just going to Bible school to learn these symbols and to learn what this Bible was talking about. This was supernatural instruction by Almighty God to bring an answer back to the church. My, hey man, what's it going to do? It's going to bring vindication. Now, vindication is going to be the answer. When God fulfills the scripture, then the scripture is truly vindicated. If somebody says something's going to take place, when it takes place is the vindication of it doing it, of it happening. 
Now the white wig, of course, that you've seen out there, that picture, you see it all the time. What's it actually mean? Now, a lot of people says it means a lot of things, but it actually means a perfect identification of the vindication of the message of truth, that it's true, it's not a third person, it's the only person. It's the Word. See, what happened out there on Mount Sunset? It was the quickening power of God bringing the seals to the church. He is the one that opens these seals. See, Daniel, Daniel and the Chaldeans and all the wise men said, there is nobody, O king, who can tell you this matter because you won't tell us. How can we tell you? You ever notice in the Revelations, the 8th chapter and the 1st verse, the Bible said, and when the 7th seal was opened, there was silence in space of a half hour. Now, in every other seal, there's a horse that rides. There's something under the seal, but when it comes to the 7th, there's total silence. There's nothing there. In Matthew 24, he's silent on the matter. He's silent upon these things because he's waiting for an end time bride who's going to need an answer in the middle of Satan's Eden that can withstand every devil and every interpretation. Amen. If the devil gets a hold of it, he'll twist it up and turn it around and make it mean this and make it mean that. But if God will leave it a secret until the last day bride... And then he will interpret it. That bride that hears the opening of the word will be lifted up. They'll be lifted up out of this Laodicea. They'll be lifted up in a realm of faith and truth. My Lord, with an answer from God, they'll be lifted higher. What is it? It's not the intelligence of man. It's the quickening power of God. Now, of course, Brother Adam will tie that dream under Sunset Mountain. You say, Brother Wayne, what are you talking about? I'm talking about 1 Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And that shout will be a message, a vindicated word. And that word will be, according to the prophet, a living bread of life bringing forth the bread. And we understand that the wise in the last days shall understand. Oh my. There's five foolish and five wise virgins, right? And the five wise virgins, wise virgins, the wise shall understand. According to the Bible, when the bridegroom came, the five foolish wasn't ready, but the five wise was ready. Why was they ready? Brother Bram said, because Malachi 4 makes them ready. Malachi 4 brings the bride ready for the rapturing of the church. The Bible said in Revelation 19, the wife hath made herself ready. How do we get ready, Brother Wayne? You've got to put on the garments of the revelation of the message of the hour. We have been robed in the revelation of the righteousness of God. No wonder Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whereby, amen, whereby it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. We've been robed in the righteousness of the Word of God. Do you know that you're clothed in this age, in this age of nakedness, in this age of false interpretations? But there's a bride who is literally clothed, and she's not just clothed with anything. She's been clothed with the immortality of the spoken Word of God, which is incorruptible. Amen. Think about it. You've been clothed with the incorruption in an hour of corruption, but it's changing the direction of your life and moving you from doubt to faith and from failure to rising up in the power of God. Whew. I'm talking about lifting somebody above the crowd. I'm talking about what Daniel did brought Daniel and the Hebrew children above the crowd. They were lifted by the understanding of Daniel. Amen. And so is it in the last day that a bride has been lifted by the understanding of a prophet in their age. You've been lifted from Laodicea to being a bride. You've been lifted from a foolish virgin to a wise virgin. You've been lifted from just being a church to being the bride of Jesus Christ. A word bride a rapturing bride, an invincible bride because you have an answer from God. I hope you, if you listen to my Sunday morning down in the meetings, you may be rehearing something. I've actually preached a sermon called We Have an Answer. Now what, what is going on is, amen, questions come, but we have an answer. Troubles can come every which way, but we have an answer. You see what it is? Job didn't understand the trial, but he had an answer. My Redeemer liveth. Though the skin worms could eat the body, I've already got an answer from God. I'm going to have a body change. 
Oh, when you got the answer, church, you don't have to walk in with your head down. You don't have to be in a lukewarm condition, always worrying about what's coming or how it's going to be. I don't know what's coming either, but I know how it's going to come out. I don't know what trial is going to come your way, but it's only gold in your life to build you to a millennial throne because we're sons and daughters of God. Amen. Do you see what God did to get you an answer? See, what happened in that day became the answer. Do you see what God did in this day to get you an answer? If you're questioning the message, you're questioning the answer God gave. Now look, if you question it, it can't rule over you. Is that right? If you have an answer and you know the answer's right, it'll rule over your life. So an answer will become the king of your life. Isn't it amazing in Zechariah 9, it said that, uh, that Jesus, the king, would come riding upon the colt, the foal of an ass. He would come riding down in Jerusalem. He actually said that he would do it. How many questions was, who's the Messiah? When's he coming? What did that really mean? What did Zechariah talk about? Questions was everywhere. But on one specific morning, Jesus come riding into Jerusalem. And Brother Bam said, what was it? He was the answer to Zechariah's prophecy. He was the answer to the whole thing. My Lord, and those that recognized that he was the answer, they begin to worship him and begin to sing, Hosanna, Hosanna cometh in the name of the king. I tell you, some of them were shouting, some of them was praising, some of them was ripping palm leaves off of the trees because they didn't have anything. They were taking off their coats and throwing it down in front of, those, in front of that mule because they knew that that was the answer. And let me say something tonight. If you ever realize that this is the answer for the rapture, that this is the answer for the change of your body. You will worship this word and it will become the king of your home. It will become the king of your life. It will become the rulership of your life. My, he was the answer to the prophet's prophecy. They rejected the answer on that day. It's what the word manifested, right? Now, Brother Manum said, but the same writer... Zechariah, who prophesied in that first coming. He said he also prophesied in that second coming. And said in Zechariah, he said it shall come a day. that shall be not night or day, but in the evening time. It shall come light. Is that right? Scriptures are going to be fulfilled. The word is going to become manifest. A prophet is going to manifest the word and it's going to produce a bride. Amen. That not only has the answer, but will become the answer. Oh, church, think about this tonight. You have become what you've heard. You're just as real as the message of the hour. Amen. It's not only a prophet that's vindicated. Amen. But Brother Branham said it like this. When he heard those, he heard those screams and shouts, Hosanna, he said, what has happened? He said, what is actually happening? He said, it has turned from the prophet to his prophecy. It moved from the prophet to his prophecy. And when the prophecy was being manifest, it culminated in worship and praise and power because faith had come into the earth. Oh, church of the living God. Amen. Think about this. Malachi has said, Behold, I send you Elijah. Revelation 10 said the seventh angel will sound and the mystery of God will be finished. But don't you ever forget that that book don't go back to heaven. Amen. That that ram's book of life didn't go back to heaven in the hands of the lamb. But the prophet said that the revelation was handed unto the bride of Jesus Christ. And John was commanded to take the book. Oh, not just take it, but you eat the book, John. And you become the book, John. And you prophesy the book, John. So there is a bride on the earth. Amen. That has an answer for every devil. They have an answer for every unbelief. God is still alive. Come on, church. You've got the answer. What you going to do with it? You've got the answer. What you going to do? Are you going to let it sit on the shelf? Are we going to let it sit in the tapes and on the books? I've got to be careful, but it's the truth. Are we going to let the answer just, are we going to let the answer just stay stalemate on a tape or a book somewhere? And we're going to, amen, you know, and even now, I don't know how they get this out of it, but even now, we're going to set our pastor down just play a tape. Well, I am still waiting for him to bring that quote to me. 
I'm still waiting for just one scripture. Just one scripture. I like just one scripture. So, Brother Wayne, what about the type of Joseph? What about it? What about Joshua? What about it? You say. You meditate day and night and put these things and you say what Moses had commanded in the scripture. What did Paul say? You say what I said. What did William Branham say? You say what I said because there is somebody in this generation that's got an answer and they can tell that devil back up off of God's property. You see what it is? I've got an answer for the devil tonight. You don't belong to this devil. You don't belong to this generation. I have got an evidence, Bible evidence to say you are the property of almighty God. I've got a right to adjure every devil to knock off every spirit of unbelief and say Satan has no claim upon your life. Come on church, the devil's fought me all day to keep me from saying this, but we have an answer from God and we're not going to sit down and shut up. We're not going to give the platform up to a bunch of unbelievers that's going to run this message in the ground, but we might as well, amen, pull the sword of God, throw away the sheep and tell every devil out of hell there's a bride coming in the last day to manifest every promised word. We are not here without resistance, and we know that. Every devil out of hell has come against this bride. Amen, but we will resist. We can do it. We'll fight because we can do it. But we shall overcome. I already read the end of the book. I've already got the answer. By the way, am I going to make it? Sure you're going to make it. I don't feel like I am someday. What does that got to do with it, brother? The word said she'll be a final voice to a final age. She'll be that invincible army. She will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of her testimony. I'd tell, if I was that devil, I'd be putting pressure on you to shut up too. If I was that devil, I'd be saying, don't you dare quote about that bride age. Don't you quote that bride coming. Hold off of that a little bit. If I was the devil, that's where I'd go. But since I ain't the devil, and I am a child of God, I'm going to preach that bride coming because it's where the anointing is in this hour. This is the interpretation. They say, where is he? Amen. Where is he born, the king of the Jews? Behold, the bride of Jesus Christ. So, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying, Brother Bram said, everything that was in the mind of God has been poured into the flesh of the bride in the last day. That's thus saith the Lord. <sighs> you want to see the face of God? Turn around and look at somebody. You see his face and the hinder part of God's mind. This is the visible image of an invisible God. This is the amorphe that God talked about. I I will not change, but I will change my mask. I'm not saying that because I feel good. I'm not saying good because it's a pepped up word. I'm saying because it's the word of God. It's the truth. It's an absolute answer. Amen. There is a power that is above you and beyond you and moving through you right now to fulfill every promise that God made to the church of the living God. Can you feel the percussion of it when it hits you? Can you feel the power of it when it's taken over your body? Amen. This message has a power. The claiming power. When an answer comes into a man, it settles his life. Brother Bram said, the thing I prayed about my whole life. I wonder what that was. The mystery of his will. What the mind was before. Who could tell you that? Who could tell you where you belonged in the body is in the mind of God before there was a world? Who, who could reach into the mind of God and say, you belong a certain age, a certain place, believe in a certain word? Who could do that? Who could tell you from whence you came and to where you're going? No wise man, no school man, no intellect man, but a prophet of God who was lifted into the pyramid, which was the mind of God, come out with the answers from God and told us what books and schools couldn't tell us. It was the seven thunder mystery that was revealed to the bride to produce a rapture faith. It's the answer from God. You know I'm telling you Bible truth. 
Now, if the answer is going to come, Brother Bram said he'll predestinate somebody to meet God in that age. Who's going to say, who are you, Lord? Who are you? He said, I'm the I am. I am the present truth, the word that is now. What was Jesus? He was the answer to the prophet's prophecy. A true interpretation of word. He was the answer. Christ the mystery, I'm talking about the headship of Christ. Headship of Christ, what's the answer? Becoming the head. Isn't that something? God gives you an answer. But when it becomes the head. Remember that? Brother Ben said, show me a church that will only move by thus saith the Lord, I'll show you Messiah. Remember, show me a church, I'll show you Messiah. Powerful thought, isn't it? A prophetic mirror. You show me a church, I'll show you, I'll show you Messiah. A church that will get under this message is no longer just a church. It's an anointed Messiah of the age they live in. A walking authority with power. Can you laugh at her? Call her a bunch of eagle Pentecostals. You can call her a bunch of nitwits. You can call her whatever you want to call her. But God called us the bride. But God called us the spiritual church in the last day. The believer. Now, Brother Bram said it. He said, notice this. By, pe- by being personally identified by the original headship, we, we have the answer to the devil's question. We have the answer to the devil's question. Watch this. Now, in paragraph 583, that devil can't stand it. That's the reason these economical kingdoms are setting up. That's the reason they're coming in the, to the way they're doing now. It's the devil. That's the reason they're howling the way they are. He said his wickedness, his scheme has been uncovered. Look at that. His scheme has been uncovered. How many knows what scheme that is? In Isaiah 14, I shall ascend above the stars of heaven into the north and shall become God. Brother Bram said he has achieved. God of this evil age, he has achieved this by explaining away the value of this, of the word of this age. Marvelous success in becoming the God of this age by explaining away the value of the message of your hour. Because he's made it another idea when it's the headship. He's made it a teaching. It's the headship. He's made it a church or he's made it some idea or some theology. It is the person of Jesus Christ coming in dynamic power, exploding in the church by the I am word. My goodness, what is it? Amen. Let the scripture uncover and go into God of this evil age. You like to study paragraph 64? Brother Bram said, Satan, he said, spoke of as the God, not of any other age, but of this age. See, and this is the age, paragraph 62, when the Holy Spirit comes to reveal what he is. The word of God, the light, will reveal what he is. See, the word will reveal what he is. When the word is interpreted, it will reveal what the devil is. Because he's not that man with them big horns and that pitchfork running around. That's not the devil. That devil is that guy standing in the pulpit saying, well, the message ain't really what you thought it was. And you can live any way you want and do anything you want. Brother Ben said, there he is crucifying Jesus Christ the second time, not on Calvary, not on a cross, but behind the pulpit. Not killing Jesus, but he's killing the effect of the word of God. Instead of it becoming the headship, it has become on the back pew. And it's just another idea. But Jesus desires more than just being in the church. He wants to be the head of the body. He wants to be the head of the race. He wants to be the answer that's in your mind. He wants to be the power that's in your resolve. He wants to be the Holy Ghost that's in your life. He wants to be it all. Brother Bam says it. You think I'm beside myself, but I'm not. We've got the answer. It's not him that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Watch what he says. Not my idea, his power. Not my idea, his power. Then tell me an answer don't have a power. Tell me a true answer don't have a power. If you really know something to be the truth, nobody can back you off of it. Nobody can tear you down. There is power in understanding. That's why under the age we're living in, it's not a man age. It's not an ox age. It's an eagle age. Amen. God sent the greatest power to the end time bride, which is the prevailing power of revelation. And what the church needs above all things is a revelation of the rapture. People say, Brother Wayne, what's the revelation of the rapture? I'm glad you asked. That's a good question. 
It's a good question. It's a good question. Let it sit just a minute. Just think on it. Of all the questions, all the revelations, what really is the revelation of rapture? What is it? What, is, what, 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 what really is it? What, what is that key revelation? You ready? We got the answer. He said, when this bride knows who she is, then the rapture will go. Then you mean the understanding of who you really are is the revelation of rapture. Then you must be more than some Laodicean. You must be more than just some church member that come in here. Come on, church. You've got to be something more than just another person living. You must be an attribute of a most high God. But when the last attribute comes in, it'll be the answer to the rapture's anointing that comes upon the church. What is it? It's the headship. The headship is here. That's the answer. The headship is here. God is vindicated. The headship is here. My, the headship, the answer, it's here. Christ, the risen Savior, is here. Where is he, Brother Wayne? He's in you. They run around for years. He's here, he's here, he's here. I kept saying, where, where? He's here, he's in you. But the same people that said he's here don't believe in prayer lines. They don't believe in altar calls. They don't believe in manifestations of tongues and visions and gifts of God. Amen. If God is in you, then all of God is in you. All that was in God was poured into Christ. And all that was in Christ was poured into the church. God didn't put his powerless portion in the bride. Come on, church. He didn't take a powerless portion and give you just a little tradition. Hey, amen. But if God give you a part of himself, y'all know the quote, he's omnipotent. He's all power. And if there is any God in you, all of God is in you. All the power of God is within the church. Whew. I'm in overtime, but I feel good. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's an hour, church. You're the bride of Christ. So, Brother Wayne, how in the world are we going to get by? Because he's already judged it. Now, I'm in, I'm in about three paragraphs of Christ the mystery. He cannot pass judgment for he's already judged that body in which I'm a part of. You say, how am I a part of it? Here it is. It's, it's in me. It's in me. Spoken word, original seed. Y'all know it. Here's the secret. The word is in the bride. Vindicated word. Not just, not just ideas, his power. Can I say it like this? The answer is in the bride. And the mind of Christ to know what he wants done with that word. Y'all know it's the truth. I hear guessing. Look what he says the Holy Spirit gave to the church. In Christ the mystery, if I could get the to see that, there is the body of Christ living, standing, redeemed. <laughs> My, we are his victory. The church is his victory. Look what he says at the bottom of that paragraph. We are already potentially erased because we have raised from the dead of unbelief in his word from denominational creeds to an eternal word of an eternal God, which is he himself working through us manifesting himself. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What's he doing? Satan is doing everything he can do to keep you from seeing that. To see that you're already redeemed. You're already a part. He's trying to keep you from seeing you are the victory. To keep you looking for victory when you are the victory. To keep you looking for an answer when you are the answer. Can you imagine when it, Brother Christopher, when it struck Brother Branham that he was the seventh angel? Everybody's looking for him. Can you imagine the moment when it struck him? I am the seventh angel. What a morning. Whew. Can you imagine? That ought to be the same It'll be the same epiphany to you. I didn't mean to slip over in the Greek, but it's a good word to explain it, isn't it? 
Satan's doing everything he can keep you from seeing it. Trying to keep you from seeing the real meaning of this word. Doing it. Notice he's trying to keep you from seeing it. Because watch now. The word moves down in the body. From the head, what he is, the same word. Nothing can be added or taken from it. And as the day comes down into the body, down the body, vindicating they are one. See, what's going on, a record now of them being the same is the word being manifested. Now, it's because in God of this evil age, Brother Bram said, this has a direct answer. It has a direct answer. Now, we know that people will deny this answer. As they did in the northern ones of the end time, Brother Bram said they'll preach Pentecost from the Bible while denying the vindicated word. We see it all the time. Preach Pentecost from the Bible, but deny present truth. Right? <laughs> but the vindicated word in his body is his very victory and the reason of his death. Now, in case you're still looking for the Ezekiel 37 army to stand, Brother Bram says she's standing on her feet. You hear me? You're not a sleeping virgin. You are a standing army. You're not a sleeping church. You're a standing army. An invincible army. So by the way, that's coming someday. Know you're the answer. My Lord. That's when I, I, I got to read this one to you. Now we see the promise being fulfilled. Christ the true headship going in, coming in. In his bride. Oh my goodness. I like to done backflips. I didn't even know that was in there. Do you know that was in there? I didn't know that was in there. His promise being fulfilled. Christ the true headship. Coming in his bride. What are we talking about? We're talking about the bride coming of Christ. In and through his bride. Listen to me tonight, friend, as our musicians will come. Daniel, the second chapter, gives us a reality that God has a way to give a people a vindicated answer. To hide it as a total secret and to make all men try it and fail and then raise up the one who can give the answer. He gave them 2,000 years to come up with the answer. And they couldn't do it. And God took a little simple Kentucky hillbilly <laughs> and lifted him up into the pyramid of himself and revealed things to him that had been hidden for the ages. Shine light. You got the answer tonight. What you gonna do with it? You got your answer. But what are you going to do with that answer? I'll tell you what we ought to do with that answer tonight. We ought to take it and drive the devil off of every bit of our property. We should take the answer of God. The authority of the word says. And drive that devil off of every God-given promise we have. Won't you stand to your feet with us tonight? We have... By God's help, a perfect interpretation to the perfect word. So, Brother Wayne, do you believe in dreams? I do. I've dreamed dreams so precise. If anybody, somebody maybe catch this tape someday, they'll know they can, they can, they can call you and tell you if they wanted to. I've dreamed it so precise to, to stand in front of a man in a dream one day. And tell him that he had a situation in another town with a young lady and he had a room rented and told him the name of the town. Situations come up that is so precise. Some of the deacons here know of a situation sometime just a few years ago. The Holy Spirit spoke directly. So we believe in dreams. But when dreams come in symbols, then you need to write them down and let them be. And then see what the Lord does. So we have some dreamers. We have some tongue talkers. We have some vision. I, I know this personally. That I've heard it and seen it. So people say, Brother Wayne, where's the gifts? It's, it's here. We got the answer. It's literally in the body. 
Just because you don't see it on the floor here, don't mean it don't happen. Somebody says, well, does it happen every service? Well, that would be a bit Pentecostal, wouldn't it? So what do you mean by that? Well, we'll just summon up the gift givers then, and we'll tell them to operate. So then we start operating the gifts instead of the gifts operating us. And people will come along with pressure, and they'll say, well, if you got the gifts, let's produce it. Do you know that's the same voice that was on the cross with Jesus? The same one. Well, brother, hey, if God was with y'all, wouldn't there be more? The... There's just as much as God wants in here. Because it's wide open to Him. Whatever He wants to do, <laughs> we have a pastor wide open to the Spirit of God. If God wants to move, this is a place He can move. i just be honest. I heard Brother Bram, as this little tape serves us, what time is it? He said, he's talking to Jeffersonville. He said, you might... He said, I believe you're probably the most spiritual crowd I preach to. And when he started saying that, I, I mean, I got a lot of good friends. I preach to a lot of good churches. But Brother Ray, I believe it's the spiritual church I preach to. I believe people with understanding and spiritual understanding and the depths of the word. It's never one thing I like about it. You can't get too hard. You can't get too simple. You can't get too deep. As long as the anointing's there, it's exactly right. Is that true? Now, it's just whenever maybe my personality gets involved when it gets in trouble. By the way, just to, toward the end of this service, I want to say a little something here. Uh, I have come to realize that my personality is a certain way, and you can't help that. You try to die out to it. And Brother Bram said, you're your own worst enemy, and I, I probably know more myself than anybody I'm my worst enemy. But I, I, I found out today that there was somebody in a meeting some time ago come by and said something to me and I didn't respond exactly. And they'd been a little hurt at me for a couple of years. I didn't know anything about it. I, I'm quick to apologize. Very quick. Because I didn't, I, I would never do anything on purpose to hurt anybody. So can, can I say that by saying this? If I've ever in, unknowingly, because if it's happened, it's unknowingly. If I've hurt somebody in this crowd by something I say or a certain direction or something like that, you, you forgive me. Yeah. Would you do that? Yeah. Would, would you? Because it's not in my... Uh, even the other day I was preaching, I was coming along and I hit, those, uh, I hit that wine, you know, which I, can't, I ain't going to apologize for that. That's true. But then I, I, I moved from that and was talking about the oddness of people and I went over to that, uh, that oil. I can't even remember the name of it now. I'm shocked. <laughs> Essential. That's right. And, and somebody said to me later, said, Brother Wayne, you really whacked that good. And I thought, well, I didn't really mean because I don't think essential oil is wrong. Now, I had to say that because my wife uses that stuff. So. And I was praying it wouldn't work. <laughs> and she puts it on her leg, you know, because her legs hurt. She said, I think this stuff's going to work, man. It stinks, you know. And I was thinking, Lord, I hope it don't work because i got to slip in the other room. <laughs> So, so in saying that, don't think, don't go away and think Brother Wayne's against uh, essential oil. If it helps you, it helps you. I was really meaning that we're willing to smell bad because something works, you know. Because it, it does stink. I mean, I ain't no apology for that stuff. Whew. You know it's right. But she, she tries to get me to wear it all the time. She got a little headache stick, you know. And she, I say, no, I can't do it. We're together. So, so in saying that, if, if I bump you in a way that hurts, don't, don't, ever, don't, don't take it that I'm trying to hurt. I really mean that lighthearted. But even beyond that, so it, it, it would make me lose sleep to think that I have said or done something to hurt one of God's people. I, I'm sincere in saying that. I, if I honestly knew that I had said or done something to hurt you, I'd get up and come to your house in the middle of the night to fix that. So please, if, if ever you need, just be sure. Because it just, it just shocked me to know that I could hurt somebody and not even know it. So I want to say God bless you all tonight. And I want to say that we have an answer. Young people, you have an answer tonight. If something happens in this world and it looks a little confusing, don't be confused by it. We already have the answer. Amen. We certainly love you tonight. Amen. Let's just sing that together if we can. Brother Ben.
have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, thou art the such an honor, Lord, to speak to your children, Lord. Father, as we speak the word, we, we feel, Lord, your strength move. And Lord, encouraging and giving, giving heart, Lord. And I just pray tonight, Father, that the things that we have spoken, may they, may, Father, they become a part of the element of the heart of, of your children. That the answer of God is so welded within their soul, Lord. That, Father, it's become a marriage. That, Lord, they've met the mate, the revealed word, and, and joined their, their being with you, O oh God. Father, it was even over Sarah that you gave her a different name. And over Abraham, Lord, through the communion, you gave to him your name. And, Father, under this message, you have taught us that there's come a joining of marriage. And you changed it. You said, I no longer call you church. I call you bride. And Lord, we're speaking to her tonight. And I pray, Father, that you would, you would help us. Give us understanding, Lord. Give us faith, oh God. Now, I pray tonight that you would bless them, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen, Brother Ray. Amen.